Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Mike Walker. And we're part of Robot in Three Days. Last week, we were able to take an analysis on teams and robots from years past that are applicable to this year's game, Infinite Recharge. This week, we're gonna be able to go ahead and compile a whole bunch of videos from other teams in Robot in Three Days and see what works best for this year's game. Now, over 20 teams actually competed in Robot in Three Days this year. We're not gonna to get to show all the teams, but we did wanna get a sampling of a lot of the different mechanisms that we saw repeated throughout different teams. First, let's take a look at power cell intake. Full Moon Robotics is able to collect the power cell over the bumper and into the robot. Week six is able to use surgical tubing on their arm intake to be able to help dampen the amount of weight that's on top of the power cell when they come in to collect it. As for the PVC rollers, they use tire bed material to help add extra friction, which works well with the power cells for this year's game. And then last but not least, for the intake, they're able to load onto their hopper with a human loading station, as well as pick up from the floor itself. A lot of teams this year use mechanism wheels to be able to help steer the ball from the outside of the perimeter of the robot towards the inside to help intake the power cells more effectively. We see AC Robotics able to use a linear actuator to help prevent the balls from jamming, or they do, to help them get them unstuck with their intake. Stone problems use two rollers. High friction on the outside prevent the ball from being knocked outside of the frame of the robot, and a second set of rollers and mechanisms to help line them up and bring them inside the robot. Now let's talk about indexers. The University of Illinois built a basic belt system, which is pretty easy to use. You can actually see that it could feed in from the human loader station or the floor, and it can score into the low goals. When lifting the balls to your shooter, the University of Michigan actually used surgical tubing that they zip tied together to pull the balls up. It worked very well, but they actually did run into issues of the surgical tubing combining and getting caught into a knot. The zookeepers had a really interesting idea this year. They actually used their shooter mechanism as their ball intake. They reverse the wheels and the balls actually get shot up a tube and get ready for shooting. Then when the team is ready to shoot, they use a pneumatic cylinder to tilt back the shooter mechanism and now it can actually fire the balls out. The path we think most teams are going to use is actually using polycord around pulley systems. This works really well because it gets a little bit of flex going between the pulleys, but enough tension on the balls to smoothly move them up. We saw a lot of builds this year in the three-day builds that work really well with this method. Now that we've talked about the indexing, Gabe's going to talk about actually shooting the balls. Snow Problem actually rams their robot against the wall of the field and be able to line up their shots. This makes a lot of the guesswork very easy for the drivers during gameplay and prevents other teams from actually interacting with them too much while they're trying to shoot in the outer port. What's cool about the robot is they have a single wheel compliance wheel, which has a squishiness factor to the wheel to add a little bit of added compression with the power cell as it launches up and into the port. Teams this year like Landlam use a turret to be able to adjust and move the actual shooter. This allows fine tuning to happen, especially when they're under a lot of duress with defense with this year's game. Another solution available is using Mechanum Drive, which allows the actual base of the robot to maneuver and adjust for the shot. But keep in mind with this year's elements with the steel rounded beams with maneuvering over and traversing with this year's field. One thing to consider with this year's game is indexing in relation to actual shooting. With Bulldogs, you'll notice that when they fire, they fire in succession, rapid fire, able to get it into the outer port. But if you're able to slow down that shot, hold onto the ball when indexing, allowing that flywheel more time to speed back up, they'll be able to guarantee their shots into the inner port versus just the outer port. Keep that in mind, like with Snow Prom, they're able to use pneumatic pistons to be able to hold the power cell in place while allowing the time for the flywheel to rev up to speed and hit their mark. The control panel, or the wheel of fortune as we affectionately call it, is a very new element this year. AC Robotics had a neat design. They did the math and they actually set their shooter up at the exact height that they could use it not just to shoot the balls, but to actually spin the control panel. First Capital put a color sensor and a wheel on a linear slide out that goes right over the control panel so that they could sense where they are at. Snow Problem found a really neat solution to be, have their robot be short enough to go through the tunnel and not have to go over those bumps, but to also be able to spin the control panel. Now you'll see they've actually put a compliance wheel on a mechanism that pivots up and then rotates the control panel, but then goes down so that they can go through that trench. Programmers, every year teams run into issues with lighting conditions. Every regional is different and you have to be prepared for that. One of the neat solutions to this was Ohio State University. They actually took a brush from a vacuum and put a color sensor inside of it. 
This allows the brush to go along the top of the control panel and remove all outside light from it. That way the color sensor gets a true reading and they don't have to worry about what the lighting conditions on the field are. Teams, programming is a big deal this year. You've got autonomous and you've also got to deal with the control panel. Take time with it. The Zookeepers actually put a really neat nine minute clip in their day three recap that shows how to work with a camera system to actually track balls on the field. When it comes for the hang, it's a good idea to have a reliable system. Snowprom has a hook with surgical tubing that has added friction that latches onto the bar effectively. Once it disconnects it from the actual arm, it's able to use a winch system to ratchet itself up in place and be able to secure their climb. Keep in mind, this is a one-time shot deal. So you wanna make sure that that hook works. Otherwise it falls off. You will not have another opportunity to go for the hang and balance. Comparatively with this team, they have gas shocks that open and deploy their arm mechanism for the grab onto the bar. Unlike the other design, it's able to retry multiple attempts in case it misses. And with the Bulldogs, they use a non-traditional choice of PVC as their arm mechanism. It actually has a smaller form factor to save up some room inside the robot. And if they miss, they can go for several attempts. And with Sherbrooke, they have an amazing design using laser etched wood as their arm mechanism and they're able to latch onto the bar and once they're able to do that they have a motor with a wheel on the top to allow them to move back and forth on the generator switch to go ahead and perfect that balance. This is just some of the great ideas that are available to you and from all the information that's available on the internet. We want to make sure that we're able to steer a lot of the teams, especially rookies this year, in the right direction. One of the most important things in first is sometimes we're tempted to try to spend a lot more time on a mechanism that just isn't working. When in reality, if we took that time and use it for programming or working on improving our drivetrain or driver practice, it'll actually get us a lot further. So set a time schedule and stick to it. We want to thank you all for watching and good luck out there. Good luck teams.